Really excited to be here and uh, really happy to see a lot of people seated and smiling. I was uh, awoken by jet lag at like 5 a.m. this morning and I was preparing a little bit for this, doing some practice, and I went on Twitter and I saw all the photos from Arthur Hayes' pool party and I was really worried that like half the conference was going to be in jail. So I'm glad to see a lot of people here. And secondly, I'm really pleased you guys are here because there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. There's, you know, the future of VeChain, really cool white paper. There's all sorts of stuff about hyperchains, next uh, revolution of zero knowledge proofs. But I'm here to talk to you about this really exciting thing called merchant settlement, which doesn't sound as cool as some of the other stuff that I just mentioned. But hopefully after this, you have a really good idea of why it's a big deal and why we at WorldPay and companies like Hedera and Visa and others are really excited about what's going on in the settlement space. So why should you care about what I have to say about settlement versus anybody else? So for those of you that aren't familiar with WorldPay, um, we live and breathe settlement. It is our bread and butter. It is our business. And we are the largest uh, payment processor and provider of merchant settlement in the world. Uh, we process about $2 trillion annually around the world of consumer payments into businesses. We do that across dozens of countries, dozens of payment methods, over 100 currencies, and we do it at an unbelievable scale. So you think about companies like Walmart on Black Friday, AliExpress on Singles Day, Amazon on Prime Day. Those are our clients, and they're trusting us to make sure that their customers can pay them to get the goods and services without any sort of hiccup every day of the year. So now you're probably thinking, OK, this is just like a Web2 TradFi dinosaur. But actually, we've been in crypto for a really long time and are really big fans of the space. Uh, I would probably wager that us having been in crypto since 2015 is probably way before most people at this conference bought their first digital asset. So we've been around for almost 10 years in the space. We work with pretty much all of the large exchanges we work with them across 40 plus countries. Um, we've done a lot for the space, including launching Apple Pay and Google Pay um, for the crypto ecosystem, and are really proud of the recognition we've received. So we really care about settlement, and we really care about crypto. So I'm going to share with you what we're doing at the intersection of those two things. Before I do that, I'm going to kind of level set us all on what I mean when I say merchant settlement. And I'm going to use a real example. So. This morning, I took a grab from my hotel to the convention center here. Now, anybody in the audience, would you feel comfortable coming up here and explaining to everyone how the money got from my card to the grab driver? Could anyone do that and tell me every single step? Other than the WorldPay people here? No. No one really knows how merchant settlement works, but we all make dozens of purchases a day, so we use this service without really knowing it. So I'm going to tell you about it. So this morning, I got my grab. And what's going to happen later today or tomorrow morning is my bank, so I use my Chase Visa card, my US Chase Visa card. Chase is going to pay Visa at some point later today or tomorrow morning. And then I use my US card, like I said. But we're in Singapore. The grab driver probably wants Singaporean dollars. So Visa is going to convert that dollar into Singapore dollar. And then they're going to send it to Grab's payment processor. It may or may not be us. I'm not going to tell you. And had Visa sent us a US dollar instead of a Singapore dollar, we might have to convert it into a Singapore dollar. And then we're going to send it to Grab. And then Grab will send it to their driver, maybe every day or once a week or whatever. Now. This is what's called the four-party settlement model that's been in payments for close to half a century. It's responsible for moving tens of trillions of dollars across Visa, MasterCard, and other payment companies. And it's OK. Like this model, depending on where you are in the world, you know, Grab may get its money a day or two after I take the ride if you're in a developed country. If you're somewhere that's not as developed and the payment rails are a bit slower, it might take three or four days. And in some cases, like if you use a credit card in Brazil, the, the merchant actually doesn't get paid until 30 days after you make the purchase. So I can go to a grocery store, buy groceries with my credit card. That grocery store is not going to get the money until 30 days later. So I asked the question, like, what's wrong with this? We could say nothing's wrong because 25 plus trillion dollars a year move on this rail 
It supports millions of merchants. It's created trillion dollar companies if you combine Visa and MasterCard together. But I think it could be better. So if you think about this model here, right? There's at least five or six different parties involved, plus their banks. There's a lot of single points of failure. There's a lot of layers and fees that all need to be reconciled and audited if you want to have proper controls. You in the crypto space know better than anybody that when there's banks involved, you're subject to their risk appetite. So maybe there's certain merchants that want to be able to participate in this, but they can't because they can't get a bank account. As we talked about, it's not really the fastest. The fastest you're going to be is at least one business day, minus weekends, minus public holidays, et cetera. So even though it works and is super stable and has been around for half a century, it could be a bit better. And so we thought, you know, what can we as WorldPay as one of kind of the four pillars of this and the biggest pillar in that corner do to make it better? So about six months ago, we launched a stable coin settlement service. And what this does is basically my bank, Chase, still pays Visa in fiat. Visa still might convert it depending on what I ask them to do. They're going to send that to me, but this is where it gets different. We're going to convert that into a stable coin. Right now we work with USDC. And then rather than sending it to Grab's bank account, we're going to send it to Grab's USDC wallet. Now what does this do? Why is this like interesting? So what we've done is we've left the left side the same, but now we've taken the right side of the transaction and we've put it on 24-7, 365 rails with no blackout dates and made it a heck of a lot cheaper and had a few other benefits as well. We've reduced points of failure. We've reduced reliance on banks in certain parts of the transaction. We've increased traceability and auditability, auditability on the right side of this. We've increased the speed on the right side, like I mentioned. So it's better. It's not as bad, per se, as the previous version. But as you can see, there's still a lot of parties. There's still a lot of fiat. But we can only influence so much in here. But what has it not solved? So a couple different things. One is, like I mentioned, we've only really brought the transparency and auditability of blockchain onto a portion of that four-party model. We haven't done the whole thing. Second is, we haven't really done anything to increase confidence, particularly outside the crypto ecosystem in stablecoins. And believe me when I say, when I talk to banks or other companies outside of crypto, there's still a lot of people that think about Terra Luna, and that's their impression of stablecoins. And third is, we haven't really made the first half any more efficient. We've just kind of fixed the last bit between us and Grab or any other merchant. So we thought, OK, what can we do as a next step to make it even better? And so what we're working on right now, which will be coming out next year, which is going to particularly address the first two points here, is what we're calling the new WorldPay Proof of Reserves Stablecoin Service in partnership with Hedera, BCW, and other firms, which I'll talk about in a second. And what this does is if we take the right side of that transaction, so WorldPay settling funds to grab or any other merchant every day in stablecoin, that's the right side of the chart that we were looking at before. Let's call this the WorldPay stablecoin service, whatever you want to call it. What we're doing now is in basically real time, we are pulling three data feeds from us, Fireblock, Circle, various banks, and our payment platform feeding that into an oracle, Axiom, the first native oracle on Hedera. They are then validating that all three of those things have happened which ev with every single settlement transaction we do. So they're saying WorldPay actually paid the fiat into the bank it was supposed to, Circle minted the USDC that it was supposed to onto the correct chain, and it was transferred this fresh, untouched USD from WorldPay to the merchant when it was supposed to be. That's all getting validated by Axiom, getting attested to Hedera, which then can be validated on Hedera. And then what we're doing is, with the Archaea mirror note service, making that available to our clients and any of their auditors or partners or banks who need the information, to get all of that information in real time to get a lot of benefits. One is, you get the near-time monitoring of payments which you don't get in fiat. You got to kind of wait till things post. And if you run a payment trace, 
the trace is probably going to take longer to fulfill than you to get your money. And what we get is for this right side of the four-party settlement, the full transparency, auditability, and reconciliation benefits of blockchain. We get a proven provenance of the stablecoin, which is really, really important to clients outside of the crypto ecosystem, particularly in regulated industries. So we can say this is fresh USDC. It had nothing to do with Tornado Cash or North Korea or whatever. It's got real fiat behind it, and we can prove that. And then we also know exactly who was involved at every stage of the settlement process. So you don't need to wonder where your money is if it's held up somewhere. You can see that all. So I'm going to demo this for you. I've got some videos. So how this works, and this is a MVP or beta, whatever you want to call it, is you've got, a, as a merchant, this proof of reserves dashboard. So your merchant name. You can see your unique Hedera consensus topic, your EVM address. You can see what sort of assets we're looking at. Um, what the data sources are, like Fireblocks or WorldPay or the bank or Circle or whatever. And then you can also drill down, as we'll see in a second, into every single transaction in that settlement flow. You can see when the fiat was deposited by WorldPay, when the USDC was minted and what chain it was minted on, when the USDC was transferred and where it was transferred to and from. You can see the status of the validators on Axiom, that they validated the transaction when it was created, when it was updated. And then you can drill down, download all the data, whatever you want. So this is super cool because it's super scalable. You guys all saw at the beginning that we're a big company. Scale is very, very important to us. This is all API based. We can scale this out to hundreds, if not thousands, of merchants because they're all replicating the same process through Axiom, through Hedera, and their scalable infrastructure and then pulling it into each merchant's own unique dashboard. What else is really cool is, obviously, it's transparent. I talked about that. But we've also got the Oracle dashboard. So obviously, this whole ecosystem, particularly when it comes to stable coins, is built around trust, which is something we're really trying to solve here. And so what we've also given them the ability to do is, in this reserve report, click on all the Oracles that are working on Axiom, see who they are, when they joined, when their last transaction was, when their, what their uptime is, et cetera. As validators get added or leave the ecosystem, they can monitor that, decide if they're comfortable with it or not. So it really gives our clients a level of visibility and transparency um, and detail into their settlement payments that you just can't get in the fiat ecosystem. So we're really, really excited about this. and. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's supporting this, because like most things in crypto, it's a big effort. So as I mentioned, we're working with Hedera and the Hashgraph Association, BCW, our partners, Circle and Fireblocks have done a lot of custom work for us on this to make sure the data feeds are real time um, and have the right information we need. Axiom I talked about, Hedera I mentioned as well, and really, this is what we're working on launching next year for the stablecoin piece. So we're really excited about this. We think it's going to build a lot of confidence and trust in the stablecoin ecosystem, particularly outside of the crypto space with the enterprises at the scale that we operate. And if you're really interested in this stuff, I also want to tease something that's coming next. So for those of you that follow the payment ecosystem, you will have seen Visa issue a press release last week talking about how they're piloting USDC settlement with WorldPay. So what's coming in the next two or three or four years is Going back to our model, we've got my bank, Chase. But now Chase can actually pay Visa or MasterCard in fiat or a stable coin. This is happening today. If Visa or MasterCard got paid in fiat, they can switch it into a stable coin. They can send that to us. And then we send it to the merchant. So we've gone from, in the first example of this I showed you, to having Depending on how you count it, four to six plus banks involved. Now there's one, the consumer's bank. And we've gone from having only the right side be on stablecoin to having it also on the left. And most importantly and most excitingly, this whole thing happens extremely quickly compared to the one to five to 30 business days that it happens today. So this is going to take a long time. 
Companies like us and Visa are not the quickest, but this is what we're working on. Visa is investing a lot in this. We're investing a lot in this. And so if you're interested in the stablecoin settlement space, I'd encourage you to stay tuned and hopefully we'll be back here next year talking to you about some of these benefits that we're rolling out for merchants as well. Thank you.